start to think about what all these years of teaching might yield if I wrote a different kind of writing book, and if so, could I write a writing book in a way that was a story, that was interesting, um, rather than there's this lesson and then there's that lesson. And I have read books like that that are wonderful, but I, it's just not me. I didn't feel like uh, writing such a book. So I realized I had a story in my hands, every teacher does, of a classroom. And so I uh, took my uh, class in writing everything and um, made a story of it. I think we were approaching a deadline, and you know, either we call it another book about writing, or it's got to be called something. <laughs> and uh, so I reread the book, and I, then I came across this uh, quotation that I lifted from A.D. Hope, the poet. Um, I changed it a bit, uh, so I sort of fudged it in the book itself, attributing the quotation, but it's not quite the way he said it, unless it moves the human heart. And um, it occurs at a point in the book that is the most important to me, but I play it as the least important um, in, the, in the teaching of the course because I really am not crazy about sentimental pronouncements about writing, at least until you've gone through the nuts and bolts. And so the book tries to do that, goes through the, as much practical advice as I can come up with. And when now that's all done, and they of course then want more practical advice. Where do I get an agent? Where do I live? What dress do I wear? Should I wear a hat? Um, <laughs> uh, uh, all the, uh, the things that attend the life of the writer, which he, we even talk about that stuff a little. But then I thought, I've got to give this last, uh, this, this last word because I believe it. Because I believe it is the most important thing to do in the world, writing. I believe that we are engaged, we at this table and we in these uh, courses, in something that really matters, that sustains sustains the race, that we would not exist as uh, creatures without it. And so, um, and so I write this letter at the end of the book in which I say that your writing, for all the things that we've talked about, will not matter unless it moves the human heart. And the heart that you must move is corrupt, and depraved, and yet desperate for your love. Uh, all of which I absolutely believe. Don't read too much. Don't get too smart in your, uh, uh, particularly as you write. If you were anything but a writer, I would say, you know, read your head off. We, all of us in this room, depend on people reading their heads off. But um, I would, I would say, read discriminately and allow for your life to do other things than read. That I definitely believe in. Uh, take out a kayak, go for a run, go for a bike ride. Um, do anything that allows a receptive state to uh, enter your mind so that you can surprise yourself with original thought and original language. The best editors, which is why I have them here, um, and this is the just wonderful, graced luck, um, knows what you want to say and what you haven't said, and what you meant to say. Almost any editor can find out where you've said something on page six that is contradicted on page 36. Um, almost, almost any editor, but not every editor, um, can help you organize something that seems a little chaotic. But very few editors can read a book so thoroughly that they know who you are, what you meant to say, and what you ought to say. Then, what happens to you? Instead of going through, when every writer goes, instead of going through the reflexive defensiveness that writers go through, saying, oh, that can't be right, what you do is you go home and write the thing that you did mean to say, because they almost always are right. Yes, I do some revision, but not a lot. Um, I do a lot of brooding. Every writer's different. Um, uh, there are writers who get it wonderfully, breathtakingly, by revising and revising and revising. I tend to brood a lot and write fairly quickly. It's a very, very good question. I don't know if writers make their best readers, their own uh, best readers, so again, which comes back to the question we were talking about with editors. But uh, surely writers do, we do read our own things, 
and we read them critically. And there are times we wince, uh, even as we write them. We know that we're going to get rid of them. It takes a lot of practice to write well, and a lot of a lot of mistakes and a lot of screw ups to uh, to teach yourself at least how you can write best. Um, I don't know. I would say that uh, most writers are not as good readers of their own things as they are of others. I think it's a I think it's a hard thing to do well, which is why you rely on your superior. The best thing about the MFA program is not that, it's that you are sitting around a table very much like this one with about the same number of people and you've got the readers that you want for two years, different readers to be sure, but they're the only readers you, who will pay attention to you. They will talk to you the way no readers do. You never see your readers as a writer, but in an MFA course, um, you, you will write a piece and you will read the piece and you will talk to him about his piece and he will be happy about it. And the, the, uh, it's a very privileged, um, rare uh, atmosphere and very good very good for writers and I think very good for writing too. Um, so I think that's the value of these courses. Here is a life that with which we are all familiar around this table that only three things are guaranteed. Uh, rejection, failure, and poverty. <laughs> and so naturally, what, it's irresistible. Why would you not go for a life that uh, advertised uh, such a uh, such a trio of goals, the um, and yet they they want to do it, and uh, the uh, the idea of uh, just insisting on it is is a um, is a terribly attractive thing. And as I say, I attribute certain uh, reasons to it that may not be accurate, but just to watch it happen is very is uh, is, is is very heartening. It's very nice.